The time spent establishing these conflicts is so well spent that when the first punches are delivered, it will be captivating. How can a new TV show take on Game of Thrones reputation without continuing the tale or following the characters? This is certainly a worry for House of the Dragon, as its first episode begins with a title card indicating how long it takes place before the birth of Daenerys Targaryen. Fortunately, its response is not to linger on these linkages for too long, but to establish its own claim as being slimmer than its predecessor. Whereas Game of Thrones was a huge, even catastrophic, fight, House of the Dragon is a familial struggle for succession, with fewer moving parts that are more deeply connected. The program is conscious that it needs establish the groundwork for these connections that will become profound scars that will result in carnage. Showrunners Ryan J. Condal and Miguel Sapotnik build a persuasive argument for their return to George R. R. Martin's West Eros throughout the course of season 1's first six episodes, which were supplied for review. Even with a narrower scope, House of the Dragon features an ensemble of significant actors and runs through a lot of plot in its opening episodes. This, however, is not a barrier to access, even if viewers fail to name every character after half a season, who they are in narrative terms is always evident. At the heart of the plot are King Viserys I Targaryen, Patty Considine, an ailing peacetime ruler attempting to avoid war, Prince Daemon Targaryen, Matt Smith, his violent, contrarian brother and official heir, Princess Renera Targaryen, Millie Alcock, Viserys' willful eldest daughter, and Lady Alicent Hightower, Emily Carey, Ser Otto, her dearest friend at court and the daughter of the King's Hand, Recephans. Viserys lacks a firstborn son to establish the royal dynasty, and while he adores his brother, he is concerned about what will happen if Daemon is ever permitted to rule on the Iron Throne. Others are more anxious about the civil war that would ensue if Renera becomes the first woman to govern. What happens if Viserys ultimately has a son? The Targaryen family has governed Westeros for a century after their ability to ride dragons aided their conquest of the Seven Kingdoms, but what happens to that dynasty when there is no clear answer to the issue of who should reign next? This scenario hangs over the series, and it's exciting to see House of the Dragon reveal the web of allegiances and rivalries at the core of its upcoming war. This is due, in large part, to the politicization of the political. Two brothers who really want to love one other can't help but harm each other. After years of neglecting her and anticipating a boy, a girl desires her father's respect, but the distance between them is tough to cross. As young women born into a political setting, two pals are instructed they must be pawns in greater power maneuvers. One accepts her job, while the other fights it, and they are forced apart. These descriptions of the fundamental connections are oversimplifications, but as in the finest character plays, things are both simple and complex. Even as fans witness the political realities close around the Targaryens, trapping their fates in amber, it is impossible not to sense that all might have been averted if just one of these couples could work through their troubles. The time spent establishing these issues is so well spent that when the first blows are delivered, it will be riveting. It will also be quite the spectacle, as these six season one episodes hint. The security of Viserys' reign is tested early on by an upstart band of marauders challenging Westerosi control of the seas, which becomes a good plot option. The lack of emotional stakes in this outside danger not only adds weight to the potential devastation of a civil war, but it also provides viewers a taste of the quality and epic scale action filmmaking that awaits them. It remains to be seen if this new show will be less controversial than Game of Thrones, but it does not shy away from powerful displays of brutality that bore the hallmarks of effects work, artistry, and realism. And directing that helped to make the original show's fight sequences so popular. Furthermore, the new series plays up to its name from the start, with lots of dragon scenes and their role in combat set to be examined in greater depth. House of the Dragon looks to be back in that sweet spot of character dedication and high-quality depiction of a magical setting. It should make for truly exciting television as long as it doesn't lose focus. However, much depends on the second part of season 1. In order to adequately establish the connections important to the conflict, the showrunners take the bold step of jumping from episode 1 to episode 6. In terms of narrative, 
this feels nicely done, with no rushing through major developments or overly extending narratives. As a result, the actresses who portray Renera and Alicent, respectively, age out of their roles midway through the season and are replaced by series regulars Emma Darcy and Olivia Cook. Point five episodes is enough time for a spectator to become connected to an actor's portrayal of a character, especially when it's as good as Alcock's headstrong princess, and the viewer's impulse will likely be to oppose that change at first. Episodes 1 to 5 felt rich enough that more stories from the intervening years might have been told, committing a whole season to that first cast before moving on, and House of the Dragon may grow to regret not going down that path. It will be up to the following four episodes to establish that this ensemble, and these people at these ages, are deserving of the attention they have received.